Hello, and thank you so much for taking the time out to listen. Today, I titled this message, Your Friends Online Aren't Telling You the Truth. Your Friends Online Aren't Telling You the Truth. So often, people will post all sorts of images, places that they have gone, people who they have met along the way, special events, things that take place at the workplace, or when they're driving in their car or standing in line. And what we'll do is we will either comment or we will like or we won't say anything at all. Or sometimes we might get a bit frustrated, annoyed, angry at what we see. But there is a group of people who they don't tell the truth. You could put up the most ugliest looking picture of yourself and somebody is going to like. You could put one of the best looking pictures of yourself and obviously you'll get many likes. But meanwhile, deep down inside, you know that you weren't feeling good that day, that it was the makeup, It was the hair extensions or the weave or the fresh dye color or for some individuals filters that they use. But the truth of the matter is, is that someone's life is a wreck. Now, this message, I will be stepping on some toes because that's just how God does. Those of you all who have listened to these audio messages for years, you know that God doesn't sugarcoat. There's been times where I played back a message and I had tears in my eyes because I knew that God was speaking his truth to me as well as many of us who have gone through our share of difficulties. When we take a look over the years at what God has shown us concerning ourselves, it hasn't been so nice. It hasn't deserved a like, a subscribe to, a comment. Some individuals, they had wished, prayed, hoped that God was going to co-sign on some of their foolishness and God didn't. God didn't. If anything, he rebuked people. He made some people within our church circle shut their mouths. For others, he moved them away from family members and friends. For others, he moved them close only for family and family members and friends to be so cutting, so disrespectful to the point where what little bit of pride that a person had, they're walking away with their tail between their legs. God does some interesting things to get us to that very thing that the desires of our heart want to accomplish, what his will is. And sometimes it comes very easily. And sometimes it comes not so easy. I'm going to take a moment to pray. And I'm going to ask in Jesus' mighty name that As you are listening to this message, that the Lord will download in your spirit the things that you are going to need in order to meet him where he is, to get the desires of your heart fulfilled, to move past the foolishness, the likes, the subscribes, the comments, the negativity that people put out there. And be the ambassador of Christ that he has called you to be. Because some of you all claim you're a child of God, but the Lord wants to speak to you about some things concerning your walk. So I pray in Jesus' mighty name that the listener will be revived in mind, body, and spirit. Re-energized, ready to fight the good fight. Ready to do what God has called him or her to do. I'm asking in Jesus mighty name that the Holy Spirit will speak, will speak to this individual who's open to receiving and that not only 
will this person receive, but will be a doer of your word. Oh, heavenly father. I ask in Jesus mighty name that all of us who have fallen short of your glory, Lord Jesus, we confess our sins this day, each and every one of them, those that we know about as well as those that we don't. And we ask Lord Jesus for your grace, for your mercy to see us through Lord Jesus. And we repent of our foulish ways, our self-serving desires, the types of things, Lord Jesus, that are ungodly or immoral. We ask, Lord Jesus, that you comfort us as well during times of grief, upset, loss, Lord. For we sometimes say things that we should not say. Sometimes we do things that we should not do because sometimes the grief is just so hard to bear. We ask these things in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. I tell you that as we move with the Lord and we ask for his blood covering to be upon us, we need to understand that internet in general is not the go-to, is not the catch-all, is not the place that validates you. Because some of the people, as I started out in this message, these friends, they tell lies. They're not honest. We know this to be true because, like I said, you could put up something that is ugly and people would like, 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 like. You could put up something that really doesn't deserve to be light, but because you decorated your face or your body up, oh well. I guess you're going to get a whole lot of likes that day until some people see the real you at home when there's no makeup, no hair weaves, hair extensions or wigs, no dye color jobs, no razor to shave, one's facial hairs, no workout routines. No special medicines, just you, naked, alone, upset, bitter, and confused. And some individuals that are real, and I mean truly real, about who they are, they'll get a lot of likes and comments looking for some kind of validation to continue to walk in their messy lives. Meanwhile, God is saying, I could care less about those likes. I could care less about subscriptions and comments and all things related to social media, social credits, all of that. I want to meet you where you are. Are you willing to be 100 <laughs> real with him? Or are you going to be the one that continues to sugarcoat, cover up, tell your friends lies? saying that they look good when you know that they do not look good. But the enemy doesn't want you to tell the truth. This is where the problem shows up. The enemy takes everything that we have known for decades, for centuries, puts his or her spin on it and says that if you say this, if you do this, if you are real or truthful or honest, even though they say, be your authentic self. You don't want me to be my authentic self because if I'm my authentic self, you're going to say that, how dare you judge or why are you shaming or you, whatever type of phobia they come up with. Come on. They don't want the truth. So therefore, this is why some of you all go ahead on and you like, even though you really don't want to like. And this is why some of you all comment, even though you really don't want to comment. If anything, the type of comments that some individuals want to say, come on, you just might be canceled. And I understand. This is why we're going to draw near to the one true God, because we see that flawed men and women, they're full of it. Let's just be honest. They are creating a society where it is becoming 
dare we say it, so accepting to the point that when people truly need help, no, 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 no. It's not help that you need. You just need to embrace and whatever label, whatever dysfunction, walk in it. I don't want somebody telling me to accept or walk in something that I know is killing me day by day. I don't need the likes, the subscribes and comments on people who are so fearful and so worried about somebody coming along and canceling them or taking their job from them or whatever else. Because some of us, we know that we are going through our share of challenges because people know that we are being our authentic selves. And they're fearful of that, even though they encourage that. Because to be my authentic self, that means that I'm going to sit in that room and I'm going to tell you the truth. And if you can't handle the truth, you might as well just stop with that mission or uh, trendy little statement of being my real self. I told one particular organization, I said, I heard what you said about this whole business of being yourself. I said, you all don't want that. They were like, what, what, what are you talking about? Yes, we do. I said, no, you don't. No, you don't. And I've said this in other audio and I've even validated people on that statement when they even brought it up on their channels. You don't want us to be ourselves because to be ourselves is to be As close to the one true God as possible when you're walking with him. We're not talking about what your mama, your daddy, and everybody else manufacture within you or what you learned when you went off to the college or what you received in training. We're talking about spiritual self. That's the real self. That's the one that's not protected by a bunch of personalities or disorders. We're talking about the core of who you are, who God has called you to be, your spiritual, your authentic, your righteous self. You even war with that self. I'm speaking to someone. You even war with that self, that self that tells you that when you look in the mirror, you're not to put that dye in your hair anymore. Come on. I know I can put my hand up and some of you all, you know, in the quiet of the day, that one self within that says you're going to go in the room and you're going to tell your children the truth the whole truth and nothing but the truth so help you God that real self that has you sit down and you tell your husband or your wife look I'm going through some changes right now and these kind of changes just might lead me to want to go out here and do something crazy so I need you to help me out I need you to be like that one who works with um, uh, a person who is suffering from an addiction and how they have to give account you know hold them accountable and whatever else I need you to be that in my life like a mentor of sorts Because I don't want to be caught up in the foolishness. You see, there is that person on the inside. Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. There is that connection that the Holy Spirit has within the core of who we are. That speaks to us and says, you're talking too much. You're cussing too much. You're acting crazy. You're doing ridiculous things. Sometimes it comes out in your voice. Sometimes it's somebody else's voice. Sometimes it's God himself, but there is something, whatever the something is to draw you in so that you can be who God has made you to be. Even if you are that in that moment, Lord Jesus. Because sometimes it doesn't stay because you get busy again in your routine. You go back to what you've been trained to do. You go back to whatever your mother, your father, your sister, your brother wanted you to be. But when you are real in that moment, and I've experienced this so many times, and let me tell you, it is a freeing. Woo, and how do you get there? Through meditation, through prayer, through fasting, through, sh- through cutting things off, shutting people off. That's how you get there. It's simple. Yet it is a challenging because once you're in that space, now you've got to fight your mind that wants to bring up all this demonic type of 
talk and foolishness and things that you were exposed to via movies and music and whatever and you're fighting and you're warring with that thing and you're breathing it out and away from you and you are just in touch with your spirit. Lord Jesus, somebody knows what I'm talking about. Hallelujah. Praise be to the one true God. You know how it feels when you, in that very moment, you are just so innocent, aren't you? (laughs) You are so righteous. You are so where you need to be. If Jesus showed up in that moment, you're like, hey, I'm good. You can take me right now because my mind, Lord Jesus, is on you. Somebody's fearfully and wonderfully made. Hallelujah. In the spiritual realm, there is the elevation, the vibrational energy that is swirling in bright colors, raising up, Lord Jesus, a standard in somebody's life right now. You will never be the same after this audio message. Let me say that again. You will never be the same because once you hear and you receive and it connects it resonates with your spirit you hold yourself accountable you hold yourself to a higher standard you will not be the type of individual that you were only minutes ago because I recognize that there is a God that's greater (laughs) I recognize that my life is not set on what People like, subscribe, comment on. They're liars anyway. Uh, Because see, you got people who they will swear up and down that they don't tell a lie. But then when you really go deep with them, just the other day, didn't you tell a lie when you sat up there and you like somebody's information when you know deep down inside it really went against everything. But that was your daughter or that was your son. Or that was whoever and you didn't want to make them feel bad. So you told a lie. Didn't you tell a lie when you sat up there and you said you were busy. When in all actuality you weren't busy. You were just surfing through your phone. You were just having a bit of entertainment. But yet you say I don't tell a lie. Come on you telling a lie by saying that you don't tell a lie. We all tell our share of fibs. If that sounds nicer to some individuals. And God, he checks you on this sort of thing. You've got to mind who is around you as you're moving into this new dimension, as you are connecting with your soul, with your God. You've got to mind who you're around going forward, even on the Internet. These individuals who they claim that they're a friend. Okay, so challenge them on it. You write them a letter or you, you know, ask them a couple questions. See if they're going to answer you or are they going to just scroll past Because, I mean, a friend is not only going to want to talk to you over the Internet, but they're going to at some point want to talk to you over the phone or they're going to want to meet you in person. Or they're willing to be there for you. I hear that there's something a bit off in your voice or I feel like there's a need. Can I help you with that? And we're not talking about psychopaths or sociopaths or people who are just charming just to get something eventually. From you after they've given a little. We're talking about just straight up. Honest to goodness friends. Who have your best interest in mind. Lord Jesus. And somebody says. And how do I get that kind of quality friendship. You've got to allow the Lord to lead you. Over the years I had to allow the Lord to lead me. And let me tell you. I came up short on some friends. Because they weren't really friends. You see. I thought they were. Because the way God is at times, you know, you figure, well, Lord, you got me on this path. I'm going to the church or, um, you know, here, here, there and everywhere. So surely these people are decent people because you called me into this space. And the Lord said, I called you into the space as a teacher or I called you into this space, you know, as for some of you all, a wife, right? Or a husband. I called you into this space as a doctor, as a lawyer, as a social worker, as an entertainer, but it is not in that particular industry where your friendship lies. Oh, okay. Well, where is my friendship? That is to be determined. 
based on where you are in your spiritual journey and your spiritual process. Because let me tell you something, you can't be a good friend to someone when you aren't even a good friend to yourself. And this is why some of you all are here having a tough time making friends both on the internet and off the internet. Because you haven't been a very good friend to yourself. Look in the mirror. You don't take care of yourself. Look at the refrigerator. Look in the cabinets. What are you eating? What are you putting in your body? If a man or a woman cannot take care of his or herself, uh, I'm going to have difficulty wanting to take any information from them. Because all the while I'm looking you up and down and I'm saying to myself, well, how can I really take any type of insight from you when you're having a major challenge that we can all see? And I don't really give a whole lot of care about what the world deems as healthy and successful and wonderful and freeing and whatever else. I care about what God says. And God says that that our bodies are the temple of the Holy Spirit and we are to take care of that body. And when we don't take care of it, then we've got a problem. Mentally, we are to be sober minded. Now, if I see a brother and he's always putting something in his body that is suffocating his cognitive abilities, right, that takes him away on cloud nine, then I'm going to have problems listening to him. What is it that you're running away from, brother? Well, I, you know, this comes from the earth. I don't care where it comes from. You running away from something, whether it's pains in your body, whether it is the past that keeps catching up to you, whether it is the fact that you can't seem to have self-control over your mouth or over your bodily functions or whatever else when you don't have your vice, but you run it. And everybody wants to be a prophet, prophetess or prophet of some sort, some type of Confucius. I see that a lot on the Internet. But you haven't put your your you haven't earned your stripes. Hmm. You haven't gone through the fire. That's why, yeah, you might get a lot of likes. But then what you just said, it goes over somebody's head or they forget about it. They're not subscribing or not following. But thank you. You see, authentic self, your authentic self is not a Confucius. Your authentic self may not have been called to be a prophetess or prophet. And I don't necessarily encourage that sort of thing because those of us who do have that type of gifting, we go through so many fires. We go through so many fires. You look at the scriptures, major prophets, minor prophets. Some of them lost their lives behind this. But you make it look easy. But it's not. Sometimes there's a temptation to want to just throw it all away. Sometimes there's a temptation to say, you know what? If I got to go through all of this, I don't want it. The devil's tricks and treats. Sometimes it looks uh, bigger and brighter. But we keep fighting anyway. We keep pushing through because we know what God told us about the demonic. What God told us about false friendship. What God told us about people who got their share of issues mentally, physically, and spiritually. He trained us for the hard times as well as for the good times. But there are some individuals who they like, subscribe, comment, and do some interesting things on the internet for all the wrong reasons. They want some attention because they want to build a partnership. Or they want some attention to fake a friendship before the masses to get what they want and then forget about you. In the name of Jesus, someone, you're tired of the lies, you're tired of the cover-ups, and you're tired of the secrets with regard to the internet. 
and some of you all are called to expose on the devious, dark, and disturbing things that some individuals as well as organizations, entities, occult groups do. And when God releases you, there's also going to be those that will war with you. But he equipped you offline for what is to take place online. And there are some things that even the algorithms cannot stop. And how you go about bringing change is going to win the people or it's going to cause the people to scatter or it's going to cause people to organize or it's going to cause people to go on attack mode, going back to the whole name calling that was going on as we were getting more and more truth being leaked out by those who were close to the agendas. And there were many of them. They called you the conspiracy theorists. They called you a liar. They called you, um, you know, a disinformation agent. They called you a liar. They called you everything but your God-given name. But there is that move I'm seeing in the spiritual realm again. And the consequences are going to be increasingly harder and harder to bear. And just when it's off with one head, there's going to be 10 more that rise up. You should have never took that one out. You should have never did what you did. Not those of you all who are listening, but those that are higher ups. Because when you call yourself trying to shut one down, all you do is you make that one that you shut down a martyr. That's why they try to discredit and do a number of things so that there is no power that that person has, whether dead or alive. They control how much of a following some of these celebrities as well as not so much of a celebrity. Because to get too much power means that they can topple over agendas, organizations, establishments, systems, and process. And when there's a lot of money at stake and you don't know all of what is going on behind the scenes... You may be a threat. So sometimes the likes on this stuff that we're all saying that makes no logical sense why that person got all of those likes and all of those views is nothing more than a distraction so that you don't watch the former reporter of whatever major network telling you the truth on his or her channel so that you won't go digging finding information out about a subject matter that you know doesn't sit well with you and makes no sense so that you don't go down the rabbit hole where your relatives worked or who they worked for and they're telling the truth about some things. If you got a whole lot of cat videos... (laughs) That keeps showing up in your feed and you got a whole lot of shopping videos or, you know, your friend feed and all the information that you looked up over there. If you got all of that going on and that's where your attention is, then you're not going to see the truth. The truth that could set you free, the truth that could make you independent, the truth that could help you with a future business of your own. Lord Jesus, I'm speaking to someone. You will never be the same. You will never be the same. When God is on the move, people will see or experience or feel something different about you, even through your images. 
Does that person ever get old? <laughs> What's going on? There's no filters. There's no wigs. There's no makeup. There's no... This person looks like they're 15, 20 some years young. God has a way of reversing the time. Lord Jesus, see she undava washing gaze. Hallelujah. Let's be honest all across the board. Let's continue to strive for honesty. Because I know some people they dug themselves in a web of foolishness. So you gotta slowly by surely dismantle all of the lies. Lord Jesus. But as long as you're working toward truth, I'm not mad at you. And don't be mad at yourself. You're a work in progress. You're a work in progress. Just tell yourself going forward, I'm not going to like on something that I know I don't like. And I'm not going to click on something that I know really has no interest. I have no interest in. And I'm not going to subscribe just because somebody tells me to describe or to uh, subscribe and I'm not going to comment just because somebody asked me to comment. If you're genuine, if you're real, if that's something that really resonates with you, then you will go ahead on and you will like subscribe, comment or whatever else. But if it doesn't make sense, or it's not your cup of tea, then don't. God wants you to be authentic with him. He knows the troubles of being authentic with others. He knows that they don't really want that, but it sounds good. And it draws numbers, some of these catchphrases. So I'm thanking the one true God for those of you all who want to sincerely make a change and who are cutting away individuals. And let's stay right there before we wrap up this message. The cutting away, some of you all did offline over the years and you knew what that looked like right it was I'm going to gradually stop texting this person calling this person stop going around this person or if I got to move out myself that's what I'm going to do and some of you all did that hallelujah and praise be to the one true God thank him every day for your freedom for others what does this look like online there's the blocks that you can utilize there's stopping notifications, there's muting, there's unfollowing. You find these various options, depending on what social media platform you use, and you use them. You use them. And when you do this sort of thing, you will notice that the information that you really want will show up as opposed to the information that you really could do away with. I'm hearing in the spiritual realm, clean up your computer. Clean up your browser. Clear your cache. Clear your browsing history. I'm hearing in the spiritual realm that the Lord wants you to draw near to him. Some of you all got the Bible app. And that does help out. It reminds us all to pray. It also will provide us with various scriptures. I am discerning about scriptures just because when you're dealing with any type of app or, or just any system that's going out to masses and masses of people, you never know who is connected at the top, who they may receive instruction to put out a particular scripture during a time when there's a lot of things going on in media so you know you can read a scripture 
but just be discerning about the timing at which they're giving you that scripture and what they're trying to psychologically manipulate you into doing or not doing. Case in point, you can talk about loving enemies, right? During a time of war, hmm, makes no sense, <laughs> right? We know God is a God of many seasons, right? There's a time for this and a time for that. And when God's timing is we're at war, we already did the whole loving enemies. We're fighting now. Wow. Yeah, sure. We got a spirit of love within us, but we're fighting, right? So you got to be discerning. Other than that, though, those friendly reminders of prayer and, you know, reading a scripture, you know, as it resonates with you and building up the type of friendships that are going to encourage and not discourage is great, too. But we need honest people. So if you look like a fool on the Internet, somebody needs to start telling the truth, uh, not as, you know, bold as that but in a kind way in a polite way like oh you are you having a bad day <laughs> are you okay call me so i thank you as always for taking time out of your schedule to listen you've been listening to youtube in enterprise seven feel free to like subscribe comment we do welcome giving and thank you <laughs>